Hello everyone and good afternoon. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside Dave Vellante, my co-host and co-analyst. I would like to welcome two guests to this segment. We have Amin Karmali, he is the Vice President Enterprise Digitization and Automization at TD Bank. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Amin. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Dave. And Amit Kumar, VP Industry Practice at UiPath. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Rebecca. So, Amin, I'm going to start with you. Uh, TD Bank, we're, we're from Boston. You, you, your, Thank you your for name supporting the Celtics. Our <laughs> we appreciate that. Stadium uh, okay. for, our, for our Bruins and Celtics. <laughs> but for viewers not as familiar with TD Bank, talk, talk a little bit about the bank and also what you do there. That's great, thanks Rebecca. So TD Bank Group, it's a North American retail bank, um, you know, top two in Canada, top 10 across Canada and the United States. Um, we have the privilege of serving over 25 million customers. We operate in every line of business from retail banking to commercial banking, wealth, insurance, and the investment bank. Um, and so really privileged to be able to lead the enterprise digitization and automation team. That sits within our operational excellence team at the bank. And operational excellence at TD is a top enterprise priority. Intelligent automation is one of the levers that we have within there. Um, we look at it from a people, process, and tools perspective. So we think about people, we've got a workforce capability that's really around driving customer obsession and equipping our colleagues um, in the front lines and the operations teams to drive customer value. From a tools perspective, we've got the automation toolkit. And then from a process perspective, we've got our process engineering team. We've integrated those together so that we're providing holistic service to our business partners and our customers to drive outcomes like customer centricity, colleague empowerment, um, controls optimization, and cost savings. And Amit, you, you are focused on industry, which That's is really right. interesting, right? Because we're talking about large language models, small language models, small action models, industry specific models. So the future is bright for you and your partners. You know, GSIs are obviously focused on that as well. But how do you see the transition from where you were with RPA in terms of whatever industry specificity you were able to effectuate there to what you think is possible with the future of Agentic and all this other cool LLM stuff that's going on? Great, great question, David, and thank you for having us here you today. You know, we at UiPath, especially from the industry perspective, we see this as a stepping stone approach. So you look at TD Bank. TD Bank has mortgage business. A mortgage business will have a lending origination journey. Now with RPA, we might be able to do steps two, seven, and eight of that, and those are essentially tasks. Now if you include intelligent document processing to it, certainly the business value increases because guess what, mortgage has a lot of documents. Now each of these loans has an underwriter, somebody who sits in TD Bank who analyzes the application. If we could give them an agent, let's start with an autopilot, we'll increase the business value even further. So we see it as a progression of crawl, walk, run, and get to that end-to-end -end automation using it, that agentic automation as the end game. You know, it's interesting, I mean, when, it's, I, when I first heard about RPA, I'd never heard the term before, it was a long, long time ago, <laughs> and uh, it was actually Martin Schroeder, who's now the CEO of Kindrel, he was the CFO of IBM at the time, and he said, hey, anybody out there ever hear of RPA? And a couple of hands went up, he says, this is unbelievable. We saved so much money, and it was a back office thing, right? And it was, the ROI was so obvious. When you think about Gen AI, it's like the opposite. Everybody's excited about it, everybody's heard of it, but everybody's in search of ROI, right? So how do you, as the head of sort of digitization and, and intelligent automation, you know, balance that need for the cool new stuff and actually tangible ROI. Mm -hmm. So for us, Dave, um, we, we ground and, our, and start everything with uh, vision and purpose. So our vision is to build a better bank and our purpose is to enrich the lives of our customer, colleagues, and outcomes. And through that, we take a look at um, 
automations or Gen AI use cases and say, how is it going to help us deliver the business outcomes for our customers, our colleagues, or to help us drive optimization on our controls or our costs? Mm -hmm. And that really helps us to kind of ensure that we're taking an outcome-driven approach to um, investing in new tools and capabilities. So it's always customer-based and it's always outcome-based. So if I think about you know, um, a use case that we're trying out right now, it's in the contact center, um, and you know, you've got a lot of contact center agents dealing with customers who've got queries on all sites, all sorts of things. We've um, taken, um, taken a number of automation and AI tools to surface the right information at the right time in the hands of our contact center agents to really um, provide them um, with the tools to better serve our customers. So we always take a customer-centric approach, empowering our colleagues to unlock value ultimately. First principles, you go back to so that, that's right. That yeah. playbook. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm really interested in what both of you are saying in terms of this agentic future. You're using the example of a call center. You use the the underwriter. What are some other use cases in terms of how we are seeing this this potential future and also things actually playing out right now with with humans as supervisors working together? I mean, I'll I talked about lending, but let's look at client onboarding. Uh, you know, banks like TD, large banks, they onboard thousands of customers and clients. I'm, I'm, I'm including both people like you and me and also institutions. And it takes a long time to onboard them. That's a classical journey that we see progressing through that RPA, intelligent document processing to that agentic future, wherein client onboarding teams are not sifting through the documents. They are essentially looking at exceptions and they're answering clients' queries, and time to onboard is reduced as much as possible. So that's, that's another classical journey that I would like to put out in terms of the example. I remember I was um, interviewing years ago, back when everything was, you know, cloud was new and exciting, and it was the CIO of Philips, and he said, you know, this, people just want you to throw stuff in the cloud, lift, lift and shift, they called it at the time. He said, it's not going to do anything for you. He goes, maybe it'll save a couple of bucks, but it's the operating model that you have to focus on. That's where you're going to really see a difference. And we were having a conversation earlier today about the operating model. That's where you're going to get leverage. So how do you think about the operating model and, and how will it potentially change as you increase the levels of automation? It's a great question, Dave. I'd say that's something we're working through as we speak. You know, if we think about a few years ago, we recognized the potential of each of these capabilities, automation and AI, individually to drive tremendous business value. And so each of us worked independently to prove the business value, to introduce the capability and deploy it across the organization. Today, we see that bringing these capabilities closer together puts us on the path to unlocking exponential potential, transforming the way we work, and really future-proofing the bank. And so we've taken a few measures to ensure that we get closer to realizing that potential. The first is that we integrated the process engineering and the automation team to become one. That allows us to take an automation first approach to solving operational excellence challenges that our businesses have. It allows us to um, accelerate speed to value as well as do it at a lower cost to serve because there's a lot of duplication in process engineering as well as automation from a discovery and a mapping perspective. The second thing we've done is organizationally, we've situated our automation team, our um, um, analytics and insights team, as well as our Gen AI team within in one organizational structure, which we call the Transformation Enablement and Customer Experience Office. And in doing so, we're able to work a lot more closer together um, to identify use cases that would benefit from the combined power of automation and AI. So that's where we are today. I see us quickly getting to a spot where we're going to have a unified automation and AI operating model and ecosystem. I think that path towards Agentic, where we're able to um, really start unlocking the full power. So it's much more evolutionary. Uh, you know, it's not like changing the offense on a, hey, we run on the wishbone, it's really simple, but now we're going to run the West Coast offense. Ah! That's <laughs> so, right, yeah. Three, four, four, three, wait a minute, time out. So, so it's, it's, it's a journey, step by step. You're not whole hog replacing the operating model, just, exactly. just too disruptive. Evolution, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and, and I think our responsibility as a platform is how do we make that happen? 
and we see this ad in three different ways. One is, how do we bring business and operations teams to play with Gen AI to be able to apply in their day-to-day -day tasks? So one of the experiences that we're talking about is autopilot, where an underwriter or a contact center agent can actually go ahead and kick off these automations can actually set the context for those LLMs to take decision and finally action on top of it. And I think that's something that we are trying to build upon. I mean, at the same time, you, anytime these new waves come along, you always look for new disruptions. Now, large banks do pretty well these days. <laughs> Although, hey, you never know, right? Um, and so, there's, there's, there's a, th a thesis that AI native companies will be born and try to disrupt the, the old guard. Now, again, we've heard this before in financial services, crypto really didn't do it, <laughs> the banks. But do you think about that from a, like a competitive paranoia standpoint? Andy Grove, only the paranoid survive? Right? I'd say, if, again, for us, it comes back down to um, customer centricity, and our customers value trust, they value stability, they value security, and so, um, that those those investments are huge, and you know the partnership that we have with UiPath with a platform that allows us to have the appropriate governance and controls to demonstrate trust um, through stability, security, and and safety, is is potentially uh, a bit of a, a defense that we've got, yeah. um, and, and so that's the way we kind of think about there. it. Yeah. Right. And it's, right. it's the nature of your industry, it's highly regulated. That's right, the, yeah. yeah. So, so how, we, we know that technology is changing so fast. I mean, earlier in this conversation, you couldn't even talk about five years, we've got to only talk about it in groups of two. <laughs> so how, how are you managing, I mean, in terms of what you're thinking about when you're doing your forward planning, and how are you navigating this, this incredibly fast changing and exceedingly complex environment? I'd say a few things. The first is always um, stay true to the purpose and the outcomes you're trying to drive. Staying continually abreast of evolving um, trends in the industry as well as emerging tools um, by staying close to partners in the innovation ecosystem, partners like UiPath. The third is having a framework to evaluate and experiment new tools and to rapidly uh, deploy them across the organization in a risk managed way partnering across the enterprise to bring everybody along, because this is a team sport. We've got a TD Invent innovation ecosystem that gives us the right framework, as well as brings the organization along. And then lastly, and critically importantly, telling our story to generate excitement, to drive the change management, as well as to secure the required resources across the enterprise. Those are some of the things kind of I think about. I mean, um, I mean is, this, is this a playbook in the sense of this, these are the best practices in ter of how it works across it, banking and manufacturing and retail or? I mean, I can speak for financial services and I do think this is the right way to go about it. Uh, one thing selfishly that I would like to point out as, as a success factor for executive is to, I mean, I talk about this quite often. Every week you open LinkedIn page, a new LLM comes up on the top. Uh -huh. So what it means is this, <laughs> It's not about the model that is going to win, but it's actually the orchestration layer that is going to win. So as long as leaders are focused on how these tools, which is agents, robots, integrations, data, context will work together, I think that'll, that'll be a big, big success factor. So how do you think that will change the way applications are developed? Oh, we have come a long way from how traditional applications were built. I see business and operations team playing a front role in, in this particular pace. You know, for example, we saw today uh, how it'll, it's going to be important for the business and operations teams to think about what are the optimum prompts for these agents. That is going to win this particular game. I'm working with a big custodian bank today where it is their legal team that is defining prompts of how to get data from that credit agreement rather than the classical software engineering where we'll have to go through requirements and go through engineering sort of waterfall model. So, you know, there are a couple of just snip, snippets in terms of how the world is changing. Well, it's amazing when you use these advanced LLMs today, you can see them prompting themselves. Uh, it, you know, you, you put a prompt in and you're, my anyway, sort of lame English language. <laughs> and then the prompt refines it, or the, the LLM refines it and it prompts itself, it's doing multi-stage, you know, multi-prompt, you know, multi-shot prompting. 
And it, the, the, the outcome is, is beautiful. And we're in, we're in like the first, second inning. You know, we're in dial-up. <laughs> so, so I can yeah. only imagine how the application development life cycle is going to be com compressed, but also just the new ways to develop applications, you know, almost on the fly. Um, I mean, there is, a, there is an example that we were conceptually talking to another bank, wherein when they would enter a new market or new region, rather than starting with a traditional requirements document, why don't we start with the regulatory paper for that market, along with the standard operating procedure as the initial point of time, to create the, perhaps the first version of the workflow that can be deployed. So those are oh, yeah. some of these um, you know, examples that are coming up very often in financial services. I mean, last question, we, you've talked a lot about the customer centricity of TD Bank Group. How, and customer, customer experience has been a real key driver in, in terms of the automation journey for, a, for uh, TD. How, how is AI accelerating this journey in this regard? Say, that, you know, the best way is just to provide an example. So if we think about, you know, a customer who calls us or visits our branch to say that they've got a block on their credit card because of a risk of fraud, you know, traditionally what would happen is that, you know, the agent supporting the customer would have to call in the fraud loss prevention team, they would have to authenticate the customer, verify transaction history, understand what the, why the flag was put on and manually release that. Today, we can activate, you know, automation uh, tools like attended automation on UiPath as well as some AI capabilities to do that entire process automatically. And so, customer comes in, the agent activates the AI and automation tool, and it does the whole uh, process end to end, eliminating the need to call in to the fraud loss prevention team, do the handoffs, et cetera. What used to take two hours sometimes, now can be done in a matter of minutes, and that's truly transformation from a customer. And um, fewer headaches for all of that's us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both, Amin Amit. Thank, Thank you. you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.